Okay, so I have this, this lava kind of jello in front. I've softened that back edge. And it's at 100% opacity. And then over the top of it, I have a 30% opacity kind of heat distortion layer. And I'm trying to tease apart. It's got these little fragments in here that I might want to erase. But mostly I think that works. Now I can play with the lighting and the coloring of that. But I like how bright and kind of crazy colored that is. So I'm not going to mess with that, but I will play with the one that's only at 30%. And this will give subtlety so I can push it brighter, right, as a mist, as a heat distortion, or I can push it darker. And I'm going to push it a little bit lighter. Because I want it to look hot. Right. And then I can go to the color balance. And I can shift that cooler. And that kind of works better with the purple clouds. Right. So these are very subtle because this is only a 30% layer over the top. So now if I put it up to a higher opacity, you can see what those color shifts do. So that kind of works. Right? This bubbling kind of cauldron of stuff. Now I'm curious to take away a little bit from this cloud. And so what I'm going to do is use my eraser at a very low opacity, like 5%, 6%, and start erasing away from this cloud. Just a little bit. So that some of that rock texture comes through. That cloud feels very substantial at its edges. And I might take a little bit away from its edges here as well. OK. Now I move to the tree, the problematic thing. So before I get into cutting this all out, and I know a lot of you have issues about certain references, which is lots of little stray parts still need to be deleted, right? Instead of going in with a lasso and trying to fix all of it, let's see what we can do with just levels and color balance. So everything that I'm seeing right now, I'm committed to, right? And I'm just building the foreground in. So I start with levels, start with the midtones, and realize I actually want them to be a little bit brighter. And then I might want to even limit the shadows a little bit. And at the same time, I'll limit the highlights a little bit. So basically just taking contrast away from it. Okay, now I'm going to go to color balance. And this is going to make a big difference. Because this was just lit by regular earth sunlight, which is warm. But it's not red. In my plan, it's very magenta and red in its atmosphere. So that's going to help a lot. Now in my shadows, I'm going to push it towards blue. Just a little bit. Maybe even a little towards green. And then in my highlights, I'm going to push more towards yellow. Bring those back. And those reds. And now this tree looks like it belongs better in this world. Okay, now I can be more aggressive. I'm going to use a 100% soft edged eraser. It's pressure sensitive for size. And I'm just going to erase out things I don't like. So no longer relying on the magic wand. But just getting the big things. And I could use the magic wand and use contiguous 
turned on and try to get each of these little things. But sometimes with a soft edged eraser, it's better to just go in and shape it. You decide what's worth your time and what's compositionally necessary. And then the other thing I could do is I could always burn down highlights too. So I'm just erasing these right now. But if there are little traces left, I can use the burn tool and get rid of them. Because they only happen at the edges. So this is a good example of where I can use the burn tool, not on the midtones, but on the highlights. Because the burn tool darkens, you can use it on highlights. You just don't want to use it on shadows. So I'm going to ch change the burn tool to affect highlights. And then I'm just going to hit the edges of this tree where it's really bright and just burn those tips down. And it kind of grays them out, which can be okay. Then I can go back to my eraser, and this time not do it at 100% opacity with a soft edge, but maybe at more like 50% opacity. Get some of that magenta to come through. And these tangles of branches. Okay, and then at last, I could take this whole thing and just gouge and blur it because it is a little bit in the background and there's the heat distortion. But I don't want to gouge and blur these rocks. So what I can do is I can selectively say, okay, this tree from this point up, I want to gouge and blur. Let's save those rocks. Okay. So I go to Filter, Gaussian Blur, or Blur, Gaussian Blur, so I can set it. Otherwise, it will just remember what I did last time. And then I can dial it back, and it's going to be very subtle. Like so. So that's 2.3. That makes a big difference. And now that tree kind of sinks into that background better. And if I need to, I can go back to levels and I can deepen the shadows if I feel like it needs it. Brighten the highlights, darken it, deepen it, whatever, whatever I think it needs. Okay, so that's looking good. Now I got these close rocks. I start with levels. Image adjustment levels. Now I want to go brighter in the foreground, right? That needs to, to come out strongly. So I'm going to brighten it and then even maybe limit my shadows a little bit. And I'm going to play with the color balance, take it a little bit away from that yellow, and a little bit more towards the magenta. I don't want to go to the reds. I want it to come forward like that. And now you see that these rocks match a lot better. And so it will make just erasing this edge out at 100% with a soft edged eraser a lot easier. Because it doesn't matter if I overshoot it a little bit or not, the colors all make sense together. And so this is called seaming the textures and it's not a big deal. I can even make the rocks look like they're part of the same structure. So all of the, the fine tuning of your edges is really done by hand. 
and try to realize that it becomes more and more important to get those edges right when you're in the uh, foreground. In the background, you can soften them quite a bit and not worry about it. So on this back edge, I actually don't need to worry about that rock all that much. And by matching the levels and the colors first, it makes this a whole lot easier. Get something that looks believable. Look, I've even got a little cave in there. And when I can't tell where one reference starts and the other one begins, the other one ends, then I know I'm doing a good job compositing. These are from different sources with different lighting, but they're working together. Okay. There's still some clunkiness to it, but that works for those rocks. Now this one, this crazy grouping here. I think I want to tackle this first. It's the shape I need, but I'm going to go nuts with these colors. So what I'm going to do is take that layer Go right to Levels and brighten it up. That'll give me more color. It'll feel like it's more in the foreground. It makes a big difference. But not so much that I, I lose it to white. Right. I'm going to limit the shadows a little bit because some of them go quite dark. So, you know, I'm going to keep it at full contrast. Okay, now in terms of the color balance, I'm going to put a little bit more magenta in it, but I'm also going to put a little bit more blue and cyan. So it's kind of jewel toned. And then the highlights, I'm going to push those warmer. And the shadows, I'm going to push those cooler. So those really come forward now. And now dodging and burning is going to make a lot of difference. So I'm going to dodge certain shadows, or I'm sorry, burn certain shadows in. Just lightly, remember it lower than 20%. And then dodge the highlights I really want to catch the light. And now I need very sharp selections. So I'm going to go right to my lasso and really kind of cut out these stones at different angles. Maybe using the rock behind it as kind of inspiration. Certain textures just can't feel soft and still be believable. But I still need that overall shape. All right. So I've got that. But it looks weird to have those really bright walks, ro rocks behind it. So now I'm going to go do those rocks, and I'm going to use my burn tool to burn them down behind. Kind of set off those jewels. But you see how it's going really gray. So now I need to use another tool, which is the sponge tool, to bring back saturation. Just in those rocks. It will keep them dark, but it will bring back the color. Sometimes in pretty interesting ways, right? Like it might even make it look like the jewels are reflecting onto the rocks. 